words on it. Let me tell you a little bit about myself. Okay. You see, uh, after failing accounting three times, okay, out of desperation, I discovered I discovered a very simple trick that helped me pass accounting. Okay. I never saw any real value until a close friend of mine was desperately looking for help to pass accounting. I cared deeply about my friend and I shared the simple trick with my friend. And I was shocked on how well this simple trick worked and went on to help my friend get over 60% in the exam. Okay. Because of my friend, more people began asking me for help. And the results shocked me. Okay. Now, I have perfected the simple trick into what I call today the three step formula. Okay. Uh, and I would love to share this with you for free, right? I would, I, I, I would love to give you access to the FAC 1601 Past Exam Mastery videos. You are going to get over four hours of great content, okay? And I'm giving you my personal guarantee that if you watch all the videos and do the exercises, you will get over 60% in the exam. I have only one request from you, only one request. Please watch all the videos and try to do all the exercises at least once, okay? I need you to watch them immediately because these videos, you know, they won't be available for long. There are three more, there are three more videos I would love to share with you for free, okay? This information alone will help you get over 60% in the exam guaranteed, okay? If you're interested, Use the link I've left below and enter your details and I will send you the link to all the videos. Okay, and um, good luck guys. You may be asking yourself, what is this three-step formula that I'm talking about, right? Well, personal accounting is super easy. All you have to do is master three things and you will be amazed how easy it, how easy it is to pass. <clears throat> the three things are, number one, Always show your workings and reference them correctly. Number two, memorize the layouts. Number three, plug in the values in the layouts. So I want to explain to you in detail uh, what the three formulas, uh, three three steps are. Okay. Number one, always show your workings and reference uh, reference them correctly. You see, uh, most students feel the need to get all the answers correct. Right. This thinking alone is responsible for the feeling of up to 75% of the students. Not only is this thinking false, but it is very expensive and very dangerous. The examiners don't care about the correct answers, but what they care about is how you arrived to the correct answers. That bears repeating because that is very important. The examiners don't care about the correct answers, but what they care about is how you arrived to the correct answers. Make sense? If you make a mistake, they will mark with your mistake and you will lose very few marks. Sometimes you can even lose half a mark because the correct answer is you only get between a mark and half a mark for getting the answer correct. But the rest of the marks is how you got to the answer. Okay? Now, <clears throat> given that you've referenced your working, your, your workings correctly, okay, you will get more marks. Okay. Now, if you want to see how this is done correctly, okay, you need to watch our uh, FSC 1601 Past Exam Mastery videos. Okay. And if you watch these videos, I'm going to show you in detail okay, how to properly reference your work. Okay. And also, uh, how to know and understand the calculations, which will get you to the right answer. Okay. I will show you all those things in detail. Uh, on my thing uh, on, on the past exam uh, videos so this advice alone you know must help you collect up to 60 percent even when your answers are incorrect okay this is this is very good advice okay if there's anything guys you should learn from me it is just this one thing and it will it will pay it, it will it will pay you back in multiples i can promise you that okay number two is what is memorize the layouts okay so you should know the layouts of statements of profit allowance and other comprehensive income you should know the layouts of financial position layout of change uh, statement of changes in equity know the layouts of 
notes for property, plant and equipment, know the layout of statement, statement of cash flows, and much, much more. So you need to memorize the layouts. Okay, guys, I cannot help you with this one. Okay, you need to memorize the layouts. Okay, accounting becomes super easy if you know the layouts. Okay, and once you know the layouts, you go to the third step, which is what plug in the values in the layout. Okay, what 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 works best is that you must have blank layouts and use them first. Okay, so now the way we do it is I give you blank layouts and then you just plug values in the blank layouts. Okay, and then once you're good at doing that, okay, then you can take away the layouts and start making making your own layouts and start plugging in the values, and you will see it's super easy. Then once you're comfortable with the calculations, reference it correctly and plug it in the values in the layouts. You will naturally find that you've memorized the layouts. Okay, it's a very simple way of memorizing it. At this point, you can't help it but love doing accounting. Okay. Now those are the three steps formula. So passing accounting is super easy, guys. It's like one, two, three, three steps. Okay. All you have to do is what? Know the workings and refer uh, reference them correctly. Okay. Draw the layouts. Plug in the values in the layouts. Then you're done. Okay. So like what? Uh, one of my mentors always says Jim Rohn, he says what? It is easy to do and also easy not to do. Okay, so guys, you know, if you're interested, use the link below and enter your details and I will send you a link to all the videos. And then you will learn in detail how easy accounting is once you, you, you start to understand and use my three-step formula. Okay, guys, so hopefully I will see you on the other side. Okay, thank you very much. Um, today we're going to do statement of financial position we're gonna do question 2.3 uh 2.4 sorry i just want to pull out the question so we can start discussing the question uh yes that is that is a question there statement of financial position uh, let me pull out the question oh wonderful it's question 2.4 we supposed to spend no more than 36 minutes on the question and you'll see it's it's pretty packed uh, okay let me just read uh, what it says it says the following information was obtained from the accounting records of t super and b men trading as superman traders nice name so number one we have a list of balances okay as you can see that's a list of balances i'll mark it off all this uh, it's a list of balances okay all the way down there okay that's a list of balances and then number two it's additional information uh, that's number two there additional information okay we go to the next page okay there's the next page still additional information wonderful and we're gonna jump jump right into what's required uh, okay okay we need to know what is required wonderful so we need to know what is required So we need to know what is required. Okay, it says here with regard to the super to superman traders, it's two point one. Prepare the statement of financial position as at twenty eight Feb twenty eleven. That's the first thing we should do, and then the second thing we should do is prepare only the note in respect to property, plant, and equipment. The total column can be omitted. <laughs> Okay, wonderful. So, like I said, guys, I'm I'm committed to showing you the easiest way to answer your questions. And I don't want to complicate your lives and give you too much information that you don't need. I have only one objective here to help you guys pass, and that's what I'm gonna do. Yeah. So, this is how you can answer this question easy. You can start first with 3.2. You'll see why. Start first doing 3.2. Okay. And then once you're done, you see 3.1 is easy. Okay. 
it's easy but also because 3.2 has more marks so like I said in my period analysis always focus to where there are more marks first while your brain is fresh and you feel you know you into it and you know your mind is working at its full capacity you want to invest that energy in what's really gonna give you a good return okay wonderful so I'm gonna go to the next uh, to the next to to the other side of the question yeah here Okay, I'm gonna come this side. I just want to remove my markings here. Okay, yeah, they're all gone. Um, the first thing I do always I start with additional information because that's where I have to do all the adjustments. Yeah, that's where I'm gonna start. So we'll start with two. We'll, we'll start with two point one. So, like I said, I'm gonna first start with the notes for the plan for the property, plant, and equipment. And like I always say know the layout i cannot help you with that so i'm just going to pull out the layout and just plug values into it okay this what you see now here you should know this by by heart i cannot help you with that okay this you should know by heart okay i just want to make it bigger so everybody can see you know um this you should know by heart okay wonderful so now I'm gonna start with this first and then we'll move to the first question once we're done. Okay, so the first adjustment says land in buildings consist of land ERF midrand. It was bought on the first of March two thousand and eight for nine hundred thousand. Okay. And if you remember on our layout, the first thing is the carrying amount at the beginning of the year. Okay. I just want to explain that a little bit because I know this question is making a lot of people unhappy because lots of people are confused. So look at this part, beginning of the year, right? Very important. So when I go back to our questions, I want to show you something. Um, I want to show you something. If you look at our financial statement, sorry, our balances, our list of balances, I think. Yes. If you look at our list of balances, do you see what's written there? S. Ed. Twenty-eight. Feb. Twenty eleven. Okay. So that means your balances it's from the beginning, wherever it starts, until the twenty-eighth of Feb. But does not necessarily always include what you had at the beginning of the year, meaning at the beginning of we at the beginning of twenty-eight. Um, Feb. Okay, so excuse my spelling. At the beginning of 28, 28 Feb, twenty ten. That's what that's what we're referring to when it's in the beginning of the year. We're saying twenty eight Feb, twenty ten. So we're more interested in what what properties did did the partnership own. Okay, at the beginning of twenty eight Feb, twenty ten. Makes sense. So. As you can see that they do put dates on 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 the trial balances to show you or this could also mean or okay the first March 2010 okay so that's what we're interested in we're interested in how uh, the property that the company owned on those dates or before those dates but after that date it does not apply okay unless we we don't have the information to 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 imply that it was after that date we'll make some assumptions on that okay let's go back to our okay so we need to know the land and buildings at the beginning of the year hopefully it makes sense now okay so if you go to our trial balance we'll look at land and buildings okay sorry we first started our, at our additional information. So this property was bought on the 1st of March, 2008. Okay, and what's our date of interest? 2010, okay. The building was erected during the year, the cost of 600,000 was occupied on the 1st of January, 2011. Okay, so what we do here, right? What we need to do here is we'll take, I'll put it up here just to save space. We know that we had one, 
1.5 million, right? We know that much. We had 1.5. You know, before after the beginning of the year, we, that's what we end up with. And we also do know that during the year, okay. So uh, we do know that. Uh, no, sorry, we don't need to do the calculations because they're showing us. They're showing it to us here that on the first of March, which is way before uh, two two thousand and nine, nine hundred thousand, right? Like I said, we two thousand and ten. So we know that before um, Feb. 2011 the partnership had had a vacant land for and the body for 900,000 right so that's why I'm putting it there I hope it makes sense guys okay sorry uh, actually it's supposed to come here under cost okay and then we need to find the depreciation for that year how much was it okay <laughs> So the next question is, did we have depreciation on our property? We'll look through it. Um, as you can see on here that there was no depreciation. Do you see that? There was no depreciation. And nothing is mentioned of depreciation. So the only depreciation is buildings. Make, make sense of that. It's buildings. It's not land. So land does not depreciate. So we do know that. Uh, Our depreciation is zero so that means our carrying amount is normal de uh, cost minus depreciation is 900,000 okay wonderful okay we're done there let's go to 2.2 on the 30 Feb uh, equipment with the cost price of 35,000 was sold at a loss okay so I'll come back to that my um, first one I know the carry uh, the carrying amount okay at the beginning of the year for equipment okay I want to know the carrying amount for the equipment now how much the company have at the beginning of the year and the depreciation so I want to see under additional information are they saying anything about it okay I know equipment was sold sometime during the year so it does not apply for what I'm looking for now okay uh, so I'm looking around this nothing there right okay so if that does if there's nothing my assumption will go to what's on the trial balance so equipment it's it's 280 right so don't forget let me show you something uh, very important I'm gonna call this workings number one I'm gonna call this workings number one uh, insert okay, insert symbol okay number one I know is on my trial balance equipment is 280 at right? 280,000 that is at the end of to at the end or towards the end of the year and I want to know the value at the beginning of the year so I know that I need to, to add the equipment that are sold which have been doing the year I want to know the value uh, let's see what was sold Okay, so on the 30th of, of November, remember the year of my interest is 28 Feb or 1st of March. Anything after that, it's during the year. So I need to, the equipment was sold, which cost 35,000, right? So I need to add 35,000 here because at the beginning of the year, it was not sold yet. So I'm trying to determine how much uh, did the partnership have at the beginning of the year. So it will be 200 and 80,000 plus 35,000 equals to 350,000 
three one five thousand right wonderful so let me go up it comes here put king kings number one and then to be three on five thousand depreciation still applies also uh, okay so depreciation let's go back depreciation was 12,080 right and we do we'll call it workings number two where we, where we calculate the dep depreciation okay workings now working number two number two yeah we know the depreciation was for the equipment that was sold let's first go for the depreciation on the trial balance it there here's it here it's 80,000 so it will be 80,000 okay close the equipment that was sold when it was what 12,060 60 equals to let me get that it's 80,000 plus 12,060 equals to 92,060. Nice, okay. That's workings number two where we calculate the depreciation for the equipment at the beginning of the year. Please understand that part. That's why we're adding back the equipment we sold because at the beginning of the year it was not sold yet. Okay. So that's workings number two. And then how much was it? Mm -hmm. It was 92,060. Okay. 2060. Okay. Well, let's go back to our child balance. Is it? Uh, yeah. If you go to our trial balance, do you see this one here? I think it's put. They put it here to confuse you. Do you see it here? The depreciation equipment as at as at 13 November 2010. Okay, it's 1,860. We also need to add that because our date of interest. We know that we're looking for before the 28th of Feb, and that was after. So we need to add it back. Okay. So we need to add 1,000, 1,860, okay, plus 1,860, equals to 93,920, okay, so it's 93,920, I need to plug it in, okay. 3,920 Okay, so far so good Okay uh, Okay, my mistake We need to subtract it because it was a depreciation that was accumulated during the year so at the beginning it did not accumulate it yet. So one thousand eight sixty minus one thousand sixty. Come on, man! Technology, the joys of technology. Okay, I don't know. It's getting upset about something. Okay, so the answer I'm getting is. 90,200. Okay, let me explain that 1,860. The 1,860 is the depreciation that was accumulated during the year. Okay, it's not a de depreciation like the one for 12,060 that was 
there, then you know the equipment was sold, right? And the, 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 the equipment depreciated that much before the year started. Okay, but it was subtracted out of our child balance because the equipment was sold. And then the one thousand eight sixty, it's what it's what our equipment depreciated to during the year. Okay, and the, 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 what we're trying to determine now is the depreciation in the beginning of the year. That's why I'm subtracting it. Um, oh yeah, hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so it's 90,000. 90,200. Okay, it's 90,200. Okay, um, let's go to the, to the vehicles. Okay. Um, on the vehicles, I also need to find the the, um, the cost of all our vehicles at the beginning of the year. Okay. So normally I will start at the additional information. Do we have anything on vehicles here? Let's go to the other page. Okay. This there's nothing here. Okay. Then I need to go back to our trial balance and look for anything that talks about our vehicles. Here's it yet, 170,000. Okay, we need to look for other places. You saw what happened last time, that when you assume that's the only place, always look for anything on vehicles. Don't take it all that long. Then you see there's nothing else. So let me go. And then we know that the cost of our vehicles, as far as we know, it's under 70,000. Okay, under 70,000. And then, um, um, we need to find the depreciation. Okay, let me go back to my child balance. Depreciation is 24,000. Okay, because um, as far as we know, you know, we did not sell or get any extra. Uh, vehicles during the year so it's 24,000 24,000 24,000 okay then you can just put the totals up there put the totals up there okay let me do that quickly so it's uh, I need to bracket this to show that it's a negative Nice. And it's three one five thousand minus ninety thousand two hundred. It's giving me two two four eight hundred. Then also here price it's seventeen hundred seventy thousand. Minus twenty-four thousand. It's giving me on forty-six thousand. Okay. The same applies here. It's uh, nine hundred thousand. Okay. It's nine hundred thousand plus two two four eight hundred plus hundred and forty-six hundred and forty-six thousand. It's giving me 1.27 million. 1,270,000. Okay. It's giving me 1,270,000. Okay. Then the same applies here. It's, it's 900,000. Plus three hundred fifteen thousand. Plus one hundred seventy thousand. It's giving me one million three hundred eighty-five thousand. Okay. Then depreciation. It's it's ninety thousand two hundred. Plus twenty-four thousand. It's giving me. Uh, 
200 you bracket that now depreciation so we've done everything for the beginning of the year now the next question is what happened during the year did we buy equipment did we sell equipment okay or anything vehicles or land or stuff do you remember at the beginning of our tour of our um, for additional information we learned something important there the building was erected during the year cost 600,000 so something was added for 600,000 right something was added a building was added for 600,000 900,000 was for the piece for the land and then they put a building in for 600,000 okay so that makes sense um and then um what else okay so this is done let's move down now additional information okay on the 30th in the 30th feb 2010 equipment with the cost price of 35,000 was sold at a loss of 3,000 okay so we know that equipment was sold right and what we need to put into our uh, notes for the property plant okay uh, we need to be able to account for that all right for the equipment that was sold so um 35,000 that was the price minus the depreciation then we get the book value and that's what we need to put in our books we need to put in the book value of the equipment that was sold okay and then the the profit side of it you know whether we did we made profit or we made a loss that will be taken care of in the um, profit or loss statement here we're not interested in the in the profit per se we just want to declare uh, the cost the value of all our, of all our equipment okay so we said the equipment was 35000 right minus the depreciation which was uh, 12060 and then that gives us the book value of the equipment okay let me calculate that it's 35000 minus 12060 it's giving me 22000 940 that's the book value of our equipment okay 22,950 so I need to put that under disposals meaning equipment uh, disposals that stuff that we got rid of it's a nice name uh, so that's workings number three which gives me 22,000 okay 940 easy guys so disposals stuff that we sold additions stuff that we added during uh, the year okay wonderful now let's move on and then we need to find something on vehicles okay so i think we are done here depreciation was must still be provided we'll do that once we calculate depreciation for the year for the year ended which is the current year that we focused on and then um, inventory consists of uh, we don't need that for now and then um, the long-term loan amount transferred okay so it looks like we're done with additions just that small part that we have to go back to okay let's go to our trial balance then vehicles anything on vehicles I just want to see if I can mark off anything on vehicles okay so vehicles um, we nothing happened during the year we did not sell any uh, we did not buy any it's still the same so it uh, on our notes you see you've put dashes there to mean you know we didn't add anything on our equipment there's a dash there we didn't buy any, add anything on our vehicles we didn't sell any vehicles so that's why you see all those dashes there okay and then um now we need to calculate the depreciation for the year okay 
So now start with property. Um, we need to go back to our trial balance when they show us how to calculate it. Uh, they said buildings is 2% per annum on the straight line balance method. So that's a very easy one. 2% per annum. So let's do the workings. Let me see if I can't fit everything in here. So we don't go to the next page. It's, it always takes more time to move up and down. Okay. So we put workings number four. Uh, number four. Okay. So we know that we bought, we, we built that land for 600,000, right? Times that by uh, 2% per annum. 2% per annum times that by 2%, then we get our, our depreciation 600,000 times 2%. It's giving me 12,000. Working number four. Okay. Okay, let me see that. Um, 600,000 times 2 percent. All right, um, so that's working number four. Okay, times because we bought equipment during the year, we didn't buy it at the beginning, we bought it in the middle. If you remember correctly, so just need to find out when did we buy it, because here it says that we bought it from the first of Jan, twenty eleven, and what's our year of interest? It's twenty eight five twenty eleven. So yeah, first of Jan twenty eleven. So let me do that. Okay, just do that. Uh, first of Jan twenty eleven. Two, okay, thirty first of Jan, no, to the thirty first of Feb, twenty eleven, which gives me two months. Right, gives me two months, so that will be times two over twelve. Okay, so it will be 600,000 times 2% two times 2 over 12. It's going to give me 2,000. Okay, so that's working as number 4. So depreciation for the year is 2,000. Okay. So let's go to equipment now. So as far as we know, we we sold equipment, so it's gonna become interesting. Uh, but as far as we know, that's what we did. So we need to account for that when we do the when we do the what's that when we do the when we calculate the depreciation. So this we shouldn't also forget this thing here that we already calculated the depreciation. Right, for something for one of the equipments for the year, we should we should also add that it's already calculated. So what we need to do, we we need to subtract out. Uh, we need to take out the the equipment sold and get the depreciation for that. Okay. Let's do that. Um, let's do that. Um, so it's going to be, let's go back to our trial balance, it's going to be uh, the equipment, the equipment, um, okay, um, so, um, Equipment, it's it's gonna be two eighty minus eighty thousand, right? 
is going to be Wilkins. Wilkins number five. Okay. That's the red number five there. Two hundred and eighty thousand minus the depreciation for the year. Right. Then you times that by ten percent. Okay. And then you add the depreciation that they gave us, it's 1860. Okay. Uh, this depreciation here, okay, my assumption is that it's a depreciation for the equipment that was sold because it was not sold by the beginning of the year, so it did depreciate somehow during the year, so that's how we're adding it there. Two hundred and eighty thousand. Okay, minus eighty thousand times ten percent plus one thousand eight sixty. It's giving me twenty one thousand eight sixty. Working's number five. 21,860 working number 5 21,860 working number 5 1,860 Okay Wonderful And then we need to calculate the the depreciation for for, for the, Okay, um, now we need to calculate the depreciation for, for the vehicles. So as far as we know, we have not sold any vehicles. So we're not supposed to have a problem there. So let's go. Um, okay, vehicles. I need to go to the next page. It's 20% per annum. Straight line method. Straight line method is just, it's always nice to work with. Less less stress. Okay, so we're gonna do workings number six now. Looks like I have to go to the next page. Workings number six. Uh, number six. So I need to find the cost minus the you know, the cost. That's all I need. Go to the next page. What's what is the cost of my vehicles? Okay, as you can see, it was 170,000. So it's gonna be 170,000 times 20%. Equals to, let me calculate that, it's 170,000 times 20%. It's giving me 34,000. Straightforward. So I need to plug that in. It's working for weekings. Number six. Okay, it's thirty four thousand. That's thirty four thousand. Okay. <sighs> Wonderful. Okay. So this is this must all be bracketed because that's depreciation okay so we need to bracket that okay it's a negative bracket that 
Okay. And look at that. Okay. Wonderful. And look at that also. Uh, I forgot to put the workings here. That will cost me if that answer is wrong. Bracket the 2000. And then also put workings number four. It's number four. Okay. Okay, so you guys can see it's not that hard. You just have to know what goes where, that's all. But this tends to be confusing most times. But if you do it, show your workings, even if you make a mistake, you still get good marks on it. Okay. Um, workings number, okay. Um, so we have it there. Um, then we, I'm, I'm not going to put the totals yet. I don't think you're going to have a problem doing them. You've seen how I did the first one, so. It's, it's very straightforward. I'm just going to get the, the other uh, things in place. So the next thing is to find your land and buildings, the carrying amount. Okay, there's it there. No, sorry, the cost. That's the next thing. You need to find the cost. Okay, once you have the cost, um, you, can, you can also find the depreciation. Okay, then the difference will give you the, the, the carrying amount. Okay. Or sometimes you'll see we'll get we'll get the carrying amount so that because it will be too complex for us to get the depreciation. So we'll get the carrying amount and the cost and we can work out the depreciation. Okay, so let's start with lending buildings. Uh, I'm just gonna put this as workings also, just for your sake, so that you know you, it doesn't confuse you. I know it has to confuse students from time to time. Okay. Now we need to find the cost for for the year ended, the cost at the end of the year for the land and buildings okay now that's easy because then you add you add your you go carrying them out at the beginning of the year minus the depreciation plus the additions right and that will give us six hundred thousand plus nine hundred thousand to give us 1.5 million okay that is straightforward depreciation we know we only have one that's it's that 2000 there it's that 2000 there okay like i said i'm not gonna do the totals um, those are easy you can figure them out and then the next thing is uh, we need to find no matter what i will do here i'll get the carrying amount which will come up here first I'll get that first and then I'll get the cost and then you see it will be easy to work up the depreciation okay that's that's supposed to work out very nicely okay so the cost and um, the cost and um, it's going to be and uh, the cost price at the beginning of the year, right? Uh, which not also let's see the carrying amount at the beginning of the two 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 four eight hundred, right? Uh, it's gonna be two two four eight hundred. Okay, so don't forget that we, we sold uh, a piece of equipment. Um, we did sell a piece of equipment during the year. Uh, we also need to account for that. Okay, so what what I will calculate first is the carrying amount, which is easy to calculate. It will be two, two four eight hundred. Okay, minus twenty two nine forty minus twenty one eight sixty. I'll get the carrying amount, which is hundred and eighty thousand. That's very easy to calculate. Okay, so I take my I take my carrying amount minus the additions, minus the depreciation for the year, I know how much I'll have at the end of the year, it's 180. <laughs> okay, that's very easy uh, to calculate. Okay, and then the next thing I will do is I'll get the, the cost, okay, because I do know that um, my carrying amount minus the cost must give me the depreciation, okay. And then if I go to my trial balance, 
the letter you find the answer go to natural balance uh, equipment okay let's go to equipment do you see what's the cost of my equipment it's at the end of the year it's 280 do you see it so that's how I know that I must put 280 there and then that minus that gives me depreciation that's how I calculate it because it, it's the easiest way to get to it okay then we go to the last part okay so same thing applies uh, you can get your cost right it's very easy to calculate right so your cost price because what happened here you didn't do much during the year right you didn't sell anything you didn't do anything so your cost price will stay the same okay and then you know your depreciation will be uh, 24,000 plus 34,000 which will give you 58,000 sorry 58,000 bracketed okay and then that plus that will give you the carrying amount which is uh, 11200 easy okay which is one one two eight hundred and then I can just add the totals like here you know it's it's six hundred thousand okay come down here okay it's only one twenty two bracketed to 940 you come down here okay you add all those okay it will give you 57 look at it 57 860 then you add all those what right? you can add all those this one is how much? Can you put, since I'm putting them down, let me try to put it down here. It's gonna be 1.5 million. And that's 2,000. It's gonna give me 1.498 million. Okay. guys at the bottom it's gonna be 1.5 million I'm sorry one four nine eight zero zero plus This one is going to be 1.5 million plus 80,000 plus 170,000. Just give me 1 million 950,000. And then this one, okay, it's going to be 2,000 plus 100,000. 58,000 it's 160,000 sorry let me bracket it 160,000 there you are done okay so uh, it's it's very easy I don't think it's that tough the only tough thing is determining the the depreciations the always a headache and the additions and the disposals but you just have to know you know 
understand it don't try to cram it into you know i don't think it's possible understand how everything you know fits into this thing you know memorize the layout and i think if you do that you know don't don't try to get everything 100 percent you know try to get most marks and you'll be fine okay i think so so thank you once again guys for for your time and i hope this really helps you pass Okay.